the cigarette that's first in the service, presents the Abbott and Costello program. With the music of Freddie Rich and his orchestra, the songs of Connie Haynes and the Camel Five. Tonight's guest, Miss Claire Trevor, and starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Costello, you're late again as usual. What kept you this time? Well, I got a phone call from my bank, and I had to run down there right away. What was the matter? The butter in my vault was melting. Oh. <laughs> Costello! <laughs> what do you want the vault for? Well, in case I get some meat. Haven't you had any? Huh? Haven't you had any meat? No. The only way I can get meat is to stand over a gopher hole with a baseball bat. <laughs> oh, stop complaining. <laughs> Things could be a lot worse. Nobody's worrying about getting meat. Oh, no? no? Yesterday, I went to the market. The butcher put his arm on a counter, and before he knew it, three women bought it. <laughs> well, if you're so worried about nourishment, why not take vitamins like I do? Now, vitamin A gives me sunshine. Vitamin B gives me energy. Vitamin C gives me calcium. I take vitamin W. What does that give you? Wow! Ah. <laughs> ah, good evening, fellows. What's the discussion all about here, bud? Oh, hello, Ken. Hello, Kenneth. Uh, Hi, Kenneth. I was worrying about the meat shortage. Yeah. You know how he is. His eyes are bigger than his stomach. They are? Hello, fat eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, of course, I'm not worried about the meat shortage. Why should you? With that mutton head. <laughs> you should talk, fat boy. Who's fat? I got a military figure. That's right. When you wear a belt, your stomach goes over the top. <laughs> now, quiet, skinny. Why don't you get a pair of snowshoes? What does he need snowshoes for? When he takes a bath, he won't slide down the drain. Ah! <laughs> That's no way to talk. Oh, no? When he gets undressed, it's like unveiling a golf stick. No, 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 no. He's so skinny, he has to put a bell on his tonsils to prove he's breathing. Uh, now, just a minute, Costello. You're always making fun of my physique. You should see my chest expansion. Yeah, go on, Ken. Sure. Take a deep breath. All right. And a boy. No more, Ken. Deeper. That's it. Deeper. More air. <laughs> See, I guess I breathe too deep. Look, Niles, if that wife of yours only fed you some meat, you wouldn't fall apart that day. Oh, yeah? Well, look, my wife doesn't have to. I'm a vegetarian. I'm crazy about vegetables. You must be to be married to that old tomato. <laughs> that remark, Costello. Ah, uh, now, don't fret, darling. I'll tell him. Costello, I'll have you know my wife is a striking woman. And you got the black and blue marks to prove it. <laughs> now, Costello, you'll have to admit that Mrs. Niles has a winning smile. Yeah, and a losing face. Oh, is that so? I'll have you know my picture has been on many a cover. Magazine or manhole? <laughs> How dare you talk that way? Why, men throw their hearts at my feet, flowers at my feet, gifts at my feet. What have your feet got that you haven't got? <laughs> now, wait a minute. This isn't getting the meat problem solved. You see, Mrs. Niles, before you came in, we were discussing the meat shortage. Oh, that doesn't affect me. <laughs> I get my meat by the pound. Next time you pass the pound, get me some. <laughs> I do not eat dog meat. You don't, huh? Here, Queenie. Come no, on, Queenie. Please, please, now stop that. Here, Queenie, come here. Uh, come here. You stop that right away, right? Oh, Costello, please. <laughs> Will you behave yourself? Leave Mrs. Niles alone. Now, don't tell me what to do, Abbott. I'm going to get some meat if I have to go out and hunt it myself. Come in. Hello, Costello. I just overheard that you were going hunting, and I thought I'd drop in and say hello. I'm the game warden up in the woods. My name's Boone, Mr. Boone. <laughs> That's it. Boone, Boone. <laughs> Boone. Hiya, Boone. I know your sister, Bath. <laughs> it's a very good idea to go hunting with me. Everybody's there to meet, even old Mother Hubbard. Old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard to get a dog a bone, and when she got there, the bone was there. So she ate it. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Boone, Boone. <laughs> Boone, Boone. Was your mother ever frightened by a broken record? I know a poem too, Boone. This little piggy went to the market. This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy got roast beef. She knew the butcher. 
Tell us, Mr. Boone, are there any restrictions on hunting up in your woods? Well, you can't go shooting all the animals. You see, they have just as much right to live as I. Even more. <laughs> and now to the rules. Are you Luke Costello going hunting with Bud Abbott? Yes. Then kindly step forward. Do you both promise to honor and obey the hunting laws of the state? I do. I do. And do you both further promise to love and cherish the grandeur of nature? I do. I and do. And in the event of danger, do you solemnly promise to protect each other until death do you part? I do. I Very do. well then. I now pronounce you man and wife. <laughs> the name is Boom, Boom, <laughs> Boom, Boom, Boom. <laughs> Man and wife? Well, Abbott, ain't you gonna kiss me? Get out of here! Hey, Bud. Hey, Bud Abbott. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't go away. Uh, yes, then. Uh, Bud, uh, look, you know anything about flying? Mm, sure I do. I was flying even when I was a little kid. Y really? Yeah, I jumped off the roof with an umbrella and I stayed in the air for three hours. Oh, wait a minute. How could you stay in the air for three hours? My pants got caught on the drain pipe. <laughs> uh, a ripping joke. But no, but look, I'm talking about real fly. Like trying to tear the wings off an experimental ship in a power dive. Stuff like that is just meat and potatoes for Red Hulks, the Curtis test pilot who tried out the Navy's amazing new dive bomber. And whether it's planes or cigarettes, Red Hulks likes to test things out for himself. He said, quote, I picked camels after I'd smoked them long enough to know that they were the only brand that suited me best on all accounts. They're really easy on my throat, and they give me that full, rich taste I like. Unquote. Yes, with men in all the services, camel is the favorite, according to actual sales records in post exchanges and canteens. You're in good company when you smoke camels. You're joining thousands of men and women who have been smoking them for more than 25 years. Smoking camels. The cigarette, we believe, more people have been smoking longer than any other. Loyalty like that proves Camel's character, the thing that makes you like Camel's more with every pack you smoke. You can find out about character for yourself in your T-Zone. T for taste and T for throat, your own proving ground for flavor and mildness. You'll find that Camel's have more flavor, and it's extra flavor that helps them to wear well, pack after pack. Camel's are extra mild, too because they're slow-burning and cool smoking. For steady smoking, stick to Camel, the cigarette that's expertly blended of costlier tobaccos. C-A-M-E-L-S. Camel, get a pack tonight. You'll want to buy a carton tomorrow. <laughs> Freddie Richards Orchestra and the Camel Five introduce the title song from Dick Powell's new picture, Happy Go Lucky. Can't this be me feeling so happy go lucky? Looking in your happy go lucky eyes. Can this be me feeling so happy go lucky? Costello, 
the Pine Tree Hunting Lodge in the heart of the North Woods. Now, you ought to be able to shoot plenty of meat up here. I don't know, Abbott. It's too cold up here. Let's get back to town. I want to get my spine to frost it. Oh, don't be silly. This is invigorating. It isn't cold. It isn't cold. Certainly not. I just saw a squirrel going down the road wearing a silver fox. Oh, come on. That's... What's the matter with your eyesight? That's nonsense. And right behind him was a rabbit wearing earmuffs. Oh, now, Lou, Lou. Come on. What was on. it, Abbott? Come on, guys. Rabbit, Rabbit. Somebody, I don't know. Never mind that. Oh, oh next page. Next yeah, come page. Come on. <laughs> Well, come on, let's get our things unpacked. Did you bring my red hunting jacket? I hope. No. You tell me I can't go hunting without a red jacket. Now, you know don't that. Don't worry, don't worry. You'll have a red jacket. I will. Yeah, I brought your Palm Beach suit and four bottles of ketchup. Oh. Well, anyhow, I sent for a guy to take us hunting. I wish he'd get here. I'm dying for a piece of venison. Venison? Sure, that's deer meat. Wouldn't you like to shoot a buck, dear? I haven't got a buck, honey. I <laughs> Look, I'm talking about hunting. Haven't you ever hunted before? Oh, sure. I caught a mink and shot nine bucks in 15 minutes. Now, that's ridiculous. How could you shoot nine bucks in 15 minutes? Did you ever go out with a hungry blonde? Sure. I, I should say not. Oh, skip it. And get that suitcase unpacked. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Sounds like a mouse in that suitcase. Open it up. It's a mouse, all right. And I'm only three and a half years old. <laughs> Hey, it's that kid again, ain't it? Yeah. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Hey, Matilda. Now, look, this is no place for a little bur girl. A girl, a girl, whatever it is. <laughs> There's... Why don't they make bigger type? All right, never mind that. Now, be nice. There's a lot of wild animals up here. I'm not afraid of animals. My daddy's an elk. Elk? <laughs> Matilda, that kind of an elk isn't an animal. You never saw my daddy. <laughs> Why don't you stick your head in a bear trap and don't let go? Costella, how can you be so unkind to that child? She has a good head on her. Her head in the back would start a softball game. <laughs> Uncle Louie, can I go hunting with you? I know how to handle animals. Once I grabbed the cow by the horn. Now, Matilda, behave. A cow hasn't any horns. No wonder I got milk. Uh, uh, Matilda. <laughs> Now, Matilda, how can you be so stupid? Now, Costella, Matilda's just a child. Her brain is developing. Yeah, too little and too late. Uncle Louie, Uncle Louie, I want to go hunting with you. I want to pull a bear's tail. No, you don't. If you pull a bear's tail, it will bite you. No, it won't. And why not? Bears don't bite with that end. <laughs> <laughs> and look, Matilda, will you do us a favor, please? Just run along and don't bother us now. The guy that's going to be here soon to take us hunting. And Uncle Louie and I have to unpack. Well, before I go, Uncle Louie, can I do my animal impersonation? Okay, anything at all. What is it? It goes like this. Kid, ouch. Kid, ouch. Kid, ouch. Wait a minute. What's that kiss? Ouch. That's two porcupines necking. <laughs> Will you get out of here? Hey, I'd like to find out who Matilda's writer is. Not what, bad. What's the matter now? For a minute, that kid, I thought I was 103 and a half years old. Uh, 103 and a half? So wait a minute. That must be the guide now. Come in. Howdy, fellows. I'm your hunting guide. Hey, Abbott, it's a dame. Quiet, certainly. Don't you recognize her? It's Claire Trevor. Miss Trevor, we weren't expecting a girl. We thought a man was going to lead us. Well, didn't you ever follow a woman before? Well, once I followed a woman who used to catch minks. Papa? No, another guy beat me to her. <laughs> now, don't talk like that, Lou. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Abbott. You know, my sister thinks Costello is the best comedian on the air. Oh, gee, thanks. I'd like to meet her. Well, you can't. We never let her out of the attic. <laughs> What a clever Trevor. <laughs> Marcella, behave. Now, Miss Trevor... Oh, uh, won't you call me Claire? <laughs> well, uh, uh, will you call me Bud? Uh -huh. uh, will you call me when this is all over? <laughs> By the way, Claire, how did you happen to become a guy handling guns and rifles? Well, you see, in pictures, I used to be a gangster's mole. Mole? The word is mouth. I know, but I can't get a laugh with mouth. 
Mm-hmm. That takes care of me, sister. All right, all right. Now, just take it easy. No remarks, Costello. You see, Claire, the reason we came up here in the woods is because of the meat shortage. Costello wants to do a little hunting. Oh, really? What's your favorite animal? Roast beef. Eh, Costello. <laughs> People don't hunt roast beef. What was that line in front of the butchers this morning? Termites? All right, all right. Now, just let it go at that. Take it easy. All right, boys. Let's get to the hunting trip. Now, you start out at 5 o'clock in the morning. You trap for 15 miles with a pack on your back, a lilt in your voice, a song in your soul. And a blister on my heel. <laughs> We should reach the mountain by noon, don't you think, Claire? Yes, that's about right. And 12 to 1, we climb the mountain. 12 to 1, I don't make it. (laughs) It must be beautiful on top of the mountain, Claire. Oh, it is. And you can listen to your echo. You simply say, hello. And then the echo says, hello. Sociable, ain't it? And then I yell again, how are you? And the echo comes back, how are you? And then I say, it's a nice day. Uh, Say, Claire. Uh, Yes, sir? You, You enjoy that sort of thing? Quiet, Costello. Go ahead. All right, never mind. Please. Happy New Year! Merry Christmas! No, 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 nothing of the kind. You know, echoes. Huh? Echoes, echoes. Maybe Claire enjoys them, maybe you don't, so just keep quiet. Go ahead. I like eclairs. Not eclairs, not those things. This is entirely different. Now behave. Oh, it's very exciting. Yes. And as you're standing there, suddenly you hear a loud roar, and through the brush comes the most ferocious bear in the world. Oh, Grizzly. Costello, you rush up. And grab them with your bare hands. What kind of a fool do you think I am? Why, are there different kinds? (laughs) Costello, what would you do in the face of such danger? Why, I'll do what I did once before. What do you mean? A bear was coming at me. No, I picked up my gun. You did? And with one bullet, I shot him in the foot and knocked all his teeth out. Now, wait a minute. How could you knock all his teeth out if you shot him in the foot? He was biting his nails. Johnny Haynes of the Camel Five with a sparkling tune from Paramount Star Spangled Rhythm. Doing it for defense. Mr. Bone, get this right. I'm your day for tonight. But when I hold you tight. I'm doing it for defense. Months and months you've been drilled. Now it's time you were thrilled. Start from here, then we build. I'm doing it for defense. If you kiss my lips and you feel me respond, it's because I just can't afford a bond. If you think you carry grand brother, relax. You just proceed it on my income tax. Don't be hurt. Don't get sore. I'm a pal. Nothing more. This ain't love. This is war. I'm doing it for defense. Don't be hurt. Don't get so. I'm a pal. Nothing more. shooting at. We haven't started any game yet. It says in my hunting book, if you get cold, take a couple of shots. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but you almost hit me. What's the matter? Are eyes bad? What, Claire? Eyes bad. Is who? Oh. <laughs> Is you a bad girl? Nah, Is you? Miss Trevor's trying to pick up some animal tracks. Follow her. Okay. Gee, Claire, 
That's a nice bustle you're wearing. That's no bustle. My knapsack slips. <laughs> oh, say. <laughs> hey, my dog must be on the trail of something. <laughs> hey, hey. Go away, go away. Get him away from me. <laughs> be careful of that dog, Costello. It's an Airedale. I know. I can feel the air. <laughs> oh, dear. I suppose I should have bought a muscle. A muscle? Mm. Muzzle. <laughs> <laughs> So you should have brought a muscle. Well, Why, do you bite too? Ah, uh, yeah. I'll <laughs> oh, stop these remarks, Costello. Uh, Claire's dog is very intelligent. He certainly is, and I'll prove it to you. Roger, Roger, how much is one and one? <coughs> Good. How much is two and two? <coughs> hey, what a smart dog. Hey, Roger, what time is it? Half past five. <laughs> That ain't a hunting dog. That's a watchdog. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. What am I talking about, dog? <laughs> well, boys, you better get your guns loaded. We may come across some game any minute. Gun loaded, Costello? Yeah. Wait a minute. Look. There's a wild turkey over there. Hey, Abbott. A turkey. A real turkey. Woo! I'm finally going to get something to eat. All right. Take it easy now. Sight your gun. Now, ready? Aim. Ah! Must we shoot the bird when his back is turned? I'm the warden named Boom Boom. <laughs> boom Boom. Uh, just a second, warden. I'm the guide, and Mr. Costello isn't doing anything wrong. Yes, he is. That's too large a gun for such a small bird. Naughty, naughty named Boom Boom Boom. Hey, boom Boom Boom. Wait a minute. Can I use a bow and arrow? Oh, no. That was too sharp. Too sharp. Then can I use a swing shot? No. That would bruise the bird. Do you mind if I just give him a dirty look? Say, wait a minute. There's a whole flock of ducks getting up out of the water. Oh, yes. You stand in the middle, Costello. In the middle? And let you two shoot over me? Yes, and I'll take the high bird. And I'll take the low bird. And I'll be in a hospital before you. (laughs) Say, Claire, isn't that bear tracks over there across the stream? Yes, I think so. Go ahead, Costello. Jump across the stream. Okay. Say, help. Times is the limit. Then I just set a new record. Yeah, here. Give me your hand. Yeah, I'd better carry you across. All right, dear, but if you try to kiss me, I'll call for Mother. Oh, goody. She's getting a girl for me. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet, boys. Look, see how these bears' tracks go right into that cave? I think we'll find our grizzly inside. Yes. I see two eyes shining in the dark. Step aside, Abbott. I'll get them. Come on out here, you old grizzly. I'm going to shoot. Come on out. Don't shoot. I'm only three and a half years old. (laughs) This kid can get in my hair more times. Matilda, what are you doing in this cave? I went in there to catch this little pussycat. It's a whip 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 snap. No, no, little girl. That's a skunk. That's what I said. A whip (laughs) snap. Listen, Matilda, you better get out of here. Go on back to the cabin. But what if I meet a very ferocious animal? He'll have to take care of himself. Go on, beat it. Say, boys, come here. You know, I think the bear's already been in this cave. Here's a piece of fur off his coat. Coat? You mean a bear wears a coat? No, you dummy pelt. Hide, hide. Why should I hide? He means hide, hide. The bear's outside. Well, let him stay outside. We don't want him in here. <laughs> oh, come on, let's get moving. We've got to find our grizzly before it gets dark. You know, there's another cave about ten miles from here. Ten miles? Yeah, well, let's walk fast. Well, here we are. We surely got here fast, didn't we? Yeah, well, we had to. This is only a five-minute sketch. Oh, say, listen. (laughs) There's something over there. Look, it's a rope. That's Ken Niles. What's the idea, Niles? You can't be a wolf. Why not? He's from Hollywood. (laughs) Hey, what's going on here? I thought I was going to do some hunting. Oh, Costello, look. There's a little beaver down in the stream. Isn't he cute? I wonder what the little beaver's doing. Probably waiting for Red Ryder. Red Red Ryder? Why don't you try some beaver meat, Costello? Okay, hand me my gun. Ah! I'm boom, boom, boom. Must you shoot the little beaver? Fur tax, $50. After all, beavers build dams. You mean dams? Swearing tax, $40. You better pay, Costello. 40 bucks? Don't make me laugh. Laugh? Amusement tax, $20. Hey, Abbott, 
Hand me my gun. Oh, don't you remember? I'm the game warden. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, you were the game warden. Costello. Oh, that was a terrible thing you did. Yes, Costello. Now you're in real trouble. You said it. I don't know how to cook a game warden. <laughs> And see, and in the air, it's camels. Camels, first with the men in the army. Camels, first with the men in the navy. Camels, first with the men in the Marine Corps. Camels, first with the men in the Coast Guard. with men in all the services, Camel is the favorite, according to actual sales records in post exchanges and canteens. Remember that whether you're buying cigarettes to send to men in the service or to smoke yourself. Camels have the flavor, extra flavor, that helps them to hold up pack after pack, no matter how many you smoke. And Camels have the extra mildness, slow burning and cool smoking that go with costlier tobaccos expertly blended. For steady smoking, stick to Camels. Your throat and your taste will tell you. C-A-M-P-L-S. Camel, get a pack tonight. Send a carton to that fellow in the service. And remember, you can still send camels to Army personnel in the United States and to men in the Navy, Marines, or Coast Guard, wherever they are. The post office rule against mailing packages applies only to those sent to the overseas army. <laughs> Before we hear from Abbott and Costello again, here is an important announcement from our government for every young woman between the ages of 18 and 35. Your country is facing a shortage of nurses, a shortage so serious that the safety of our war wounded and the health of our civilians are in grave danger. Mid-year classes for student nurses are being formed now. Every student nurse will immediately help to free train nurses for overseas duty because students start hospital work right away. Women who are unable to afford tuition may apply for scholarships. Here's what you do. If you are a citizen between 18 and 35, graduated from high school and in good health, write today to Student Nurses, Box 88, New York City. And now, here's Bud Abbott and Lou Costello again. Thanks, Ken. Ladies and gentlemen, next Thursday night, our program will be broadcast from the Navy Receiving Station at San Pedro, California. So, to Captain Feinerman and his staff, and to my fine friends, Chaplain Bennett and Lieutenant Commander Myers... Thanks for the invitation, and we'll all be seeing you next week. And our guest will be Betty Hutton. So good night, everybody. Good night. Remember, Camel has had four great radio shows each week. Camel Caravan tomorrow night, Bob Hawk on Saturday, Monday night it's Blondie, and next Thursday night, Abbott and Costello with Betty Hutton. Claire Traveler, who appeared with us this evening, will soon be seen in Columbia Pictures' forthcoming Technicolor film, The Desperado. And now this is Ken Niles reminding you to hear the Camel Caravan tomorrow night and wishing you all a pleasant good night from Hollywood. <laughs> Say, Mr. Pipe Smoker, how does your tongue feel after smoking a couple of good long pipe bowls? If it feels uncomfortable, why not switch to Prince Albert, the pipe tobacco that's no bite treated for cool, tongue-happy smoking comfort. P.A.'s crimp cut, too, and that means it's easy to pack, easy to keep lit, and easy to draw. And remember, there are around 50 mild, rich-tasting pipe bowls to every handy pocket package of Prince Albert. Try P.A.'s.